My whole philosophy was from when I was a child. I said, this, this planet is so beautiful, nature is so beautiful, that there should not be any wars. How can there be any wars? And there was an elderly man called Robert Schumann, who became the minister of uh, uh, many things in France, and he created a united Europe. I asked him, I said, what made you do what you did? Namely, you got rid of 25 borders in Europe. And you know what he told me? He had the same story as mine. He said, I was born at a place where Luxembourg, Germany and France got together. And I was given one Christmas a new bicycle. And wherever I went with my bicycle, I was stopped because they had a border. And I swore that time that if in my life I will have the opportunity of suppressing these borders, I will do it. <laughs> and he said, that's exactly what I did. I have suppressed the borders in Europe. And Europe is much happier as a result of that. Oh, yeah. But it was his, it is like my own reason was, life is so beautiful. I always said as a kid, life is divine. I looked at the, at the sky. I went to meetings to hear about uh, the beautiful life we, we should have on this planet. And uh, I wished, I prayed that all my life I would be able to do something for a very happy, peaceful world. And you know, it, uh, it became a reality. And uh, I remember that at one point during the war, I was arrested by the Germans because I wanted to cross the Atlantic and to not get into the German uh, Hitler army. And I was in a prison and uh, it was horrible. It was a cellar in the city of Metz and there was only an, a window to let a little air in and there were, normally you could have two or three prisoners and they had up to 40 or 50 just pressed once against the other and uh, uh, waiting until they are interrogated seriously. And I said, my God, this is horrible. And uh, would you be able to be happy in a, in a situation like this? And I said to myself, well, you should try. Why don't you try to be happy in one of the worst circumstances of your life? And then I had an idea. I got a pencil from one of the boys from the people there, and I went towards the door. And uh, on the door, which was a new, very good door in that cellar uh, of that building, I began to write a novel on top. <laughs> that I fell in love with a beautiful girl in the mountains of Himalaya. And you know, and I wrote it, and I wrote it, and I wrote it, and I completely forgot that I was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> so that I gave to myself the proof that even in the worst circumstances, there is always something which you can do with your brain and your heart not to be affected and to say, oh, they're going to kill me, that's going to happen, this is horrible, that will last so many days, etc., etc. And finally, after about a week, they let me go because I couldn't find anything against me. <laughs> but I've never forgotten this, that I was able to be happy even in a prison. Uh, people who, uh, who heard me speak years ago, they said, oh, Mr. Miller, we heard you speak. It was wonderful. We had this conference on top of the mountain uh, in South America, and it was so intelligent, so great. And I said, do you remember something? One particular item? No. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. And then at one point, the lady jumped up. I know. What do you know? I know your harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> and since that time, I have my harmonica in my pocket. And whenever people uh, get involved in something and it has no result, uh, at the end of it, I said, you know, 
We didn't do, and we didn't do much in, in our conference, but let me play the harmonica and hope that we will have a beautiful, better uh, land. You know but it's working, you know. There's more and more uh, uh, closer cooperation yeah. between the, the countries. Of course, it's difficult because they were all born at the time when the animals were born, and they went around and uh, settled down, so they had to create a language, they had to create a, a god or a religion, and they were living. There are 2,000 two thousand schemes like this lived in isolation or in wars. They make wars against the next one if the next one was a little bit too dangerous. And now suddenly they are all brought together And to get these languages and these religions to, together is not easy at all. Mm -hmm. This is something which I have uh, noticed in the United Nations. It is when you have a meeting of the General Assembly. Uh, you have these uh, men mostly who are very intellectual. They have uh, many small ideas, big ideas, all kinds of things. And uh, sometimes it becomes to a point uh, that uh, they began, begin to oppose each other and uh, really to have a, a mess in the United Nations. And uh, I have taken it as a rule to say that in every United Nations meeting there should be a girl or a woman or a gentleman who would start with, at one point, with a joy or with a happiness. I would like uh, to have happiness be something absolutely essential for the whole world and not in relay. Because when you are happy, then you are fully uh, operating. And uh, it's, it's happening. You have more and more happiness, happiness in um, um, meetings uh, around uh, the world. And uh, not only happiness, what is even mm. as important as happiness is smile. And it's, uh, smiling is the, uh, the great uh, thing of women. So when you have women who smile, it creates a different uh, 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 atmosphere so that we have to elevate our efforts to have peace um, with the concept of uh, happiness. I have induced my wife, who never wrote a book, to write a book on happiness. And uh, she's now quite happy and it works on it. And we ought to have a whole literature of happiness. And in most governments it's put on the side, you know, maybe a little bit no. I think the head of a country should make a speech at the end of the year and uh, speaking about the happiness of the people. By the way, you had recently an example that made quite some noise in the world. It is when they had a meeting of heads of states and they wanted them to have a plan for the future. There was the president of Bhutan who said, You want me to give you uh, the uh, extent of uh, the economic, uh, whatever is this, uh, complicated things? I don't know what it is, and I don't want to hear of it. What I expect from my people is to give them happiness. And, uh, I'm, I'm recommending very, very strongly that uh, we should, in the whole system of the world, we should give a very big... Uh, opening to happiness, to smiles, to love, to good things that happen. People take an initiative which might be wonderful, the wonder. And we should not limit everything to economics and uh, to uh, politics and so on. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs>